Greetings everyone, it's Professor Fiore. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the TINA TI simulator with dependent sources, something like this. This is example 7.9 out of the DC Circuit Analysis textbook. And if you don't have a copy of that, the question is, why not? It's free. Just go to one of my websites, download it, use it, have fun with it. No ads, no nothing. It's just free the way it should be. The directions where to get it are in the description of this video. In any case, this circuit has two sources, right? We have a standard fixed DC voltage source over here, a dependent, excuse me, an independent source. And then we have a dependent current source over here. So this source, the value of this current source depends on another parameter. In this case, this is what's called a current controlled current source, a CCCS, current controlled current source. This current depends on some other current. So we're saying that this source is 100 times the value of this, this other current, which I'm just calling IX. All right. So we use these very commonly for active device models. For example, um, a bipolar junction transistor, a field effect transistor, those sorts of things are typically modeled using dependent sources. A matter of fact, a current controlled current source is the core of a model for a bipolar junction transistor, something you'll see elsewhere. So unlike a fixed voltage source like this, right, you set this up, it's one volt, you can go in lab, right, grab a, a bench power supply, set it up to one volt and off you go. Well, there aren't little lab bench dependent sources, all right? So this is, like I said, part of a model for something. So this is not something you're going to see in lab, but it is something you can use in a simulator. So I want to show you how you do this in TINA. Now, in different simulators, they might handle this in slightly different ways. But basically, any of the controlled sources, and there are four of them, Right? There are two current sources and there are two voltage sources, and they can either be controlled by some current or some voltage. So in other words, we have like here a current controlled current source. There's also a current controlled voltage source. There's a voltage controlled current source and a voltage controlled current source, right? A VCVS would be a voltage controlled voltage source. And there'll be a, a parameter associated with this. Uh, in the case of a current controlled current source or a voltage controlled voltage source, that's a multiplication factor, right? There's an input current, you're saying multiply it by 100, in this case, to get this. Of course, this could be fractional, right? But the important thing is it's just a, a pure number. There's no units on it. When you do a, um, a current-controlled voltage source or a voltage-controlled current source, you're turning a voltage into a current or a current into a voltage, so there's an associated unit on that parameter, and that can either be called a transconductance if it's a voltage-controlled current source, or a trans-resistance if it's the exact, exact opposite of that. In other words, a current-controlled voltage source. All right, so in TINA, you are going to go to the Sources tab over here, all right, and come across, I believe this is the sixth element, it says Controlled Sources. Kind of a funky-looking little um, icon they use here, but these controlled sources have four terminals. So I'm just going to grab one of these. The very first one at the top here is a VCVS, which is a voltage controlled voltage source. And I'm just going to drop it down here. So this is the voltage source. And you can see the polarity plus to minus. And this is the control connection, right? So you would wire this in to your circuit for the control part of it. And then this is the source. Now, over here, we have, like I said, a current controlled current source. So I'm going to grab another one of these, current controlled current source and plop this down over here, right? So this would be the current source, and this is the control element. In other words, this, in our case, would be the IX flowing through here, and then this is the uh, source itself, which we're calling 100 IX, right? Now, if you have one of the mixes, in other words, one of the ones that's like voltage to current or current to voltage, so I'll do a, um, a voltage-controlled current source just for funsies, Right, so here's your current source, just like we had over here. But here's the voltage control part of it, like we had back there. All right, 
So we just have to set up the appropriate transfer element. So in the case of a voltage controlled voltage source, right, it's voltage amplification. So I could set that up to, you know, 10 or something like that. In the case of a current controlled current source, same sort of deal. Current amplification, what do I want there? In this case, a factor of 100. In the case of my voltage controlled current source, I have a parameter with units of transconductance in Siemens. So I would put an appropriate value in here uh, for that particular thing. All right, so the question now becomes, how do I make this particular circuit? All right, so here's my controlled current source. I've already set the value to 100, all right? So this is saying that this source is 100 times whatever this current is, but how do I actually wire this thing in? Well, let me just grab a couple of resistors over here. I'll go back to my basics. Okay, so I'll just grab a couple of resistors. I'm going to need three resistors. All right, so um, I'm going to roughly put them in the locations they need to be. So these two we have in, in a vertical orientation, so I'm just going to rotate those. Put one over here. Put one over there. I'm not going to build the entire circuit here. I just want to show you how this is done. So as an example, my output, right, this is the this is the one that's going to be 15k. All right, and you know, if that bothers you sideways, hard to read, I'll just flip it so you can actually read it. This one is the 2k, it's this guy over here. Shouldn't call it a guy. All right, and then this would be the 10K. All right, so I want to wire these things in. Well, the, the current source over here that I have, you can see the current's going in to this direction, right? It's flowing in this direction, and that's connected back to the top of the 15K. So that is the orientation that I have here, right? The current's going down. So I can just wire this in, all right? You know, off I go move it around as, as need be, you know, whatever looks good for me. And then, of course, I would have a ground connector down here, and off I would go. Same kind of thing with this. Um, the output of this current source right, comes down. It appears to be flowing down into the 2K. So I'll just wire that like so. Now, the tricky bits come in with the controlling element. So notice the direction of IX. It's flowing left to right through the 10K and then into this node labeled B. That node B would actually be right here, the connection that we made with the 2K, right? So what I would do is to maintain that current flow, right, going like this, I would go from the 10K into the top of this, and then out the bottom, I'm going to bring it over to my connection there. So this is actually node B. So you can see the current's going to flow through left to right, the 10K, and then into this node B, just like it is over here, right? Left to right through the 10K and then into B. Looks a little funky because this thing is going, you know, vertically instead of horizontally, but you know, that's just the way it is. It's just the way that the, uh, the symbol itself is designed. All right, so that current has to flow through there and we go. Now, what if you had a situation where, you know, the orientation of this was a little bit different. So for example, you know, what if the current was flowing up instead of down? Well, you know, we can, we can just take this and flip it. You know, we could rotate it or something like that. I am just going to grab another one over here and paste it down. So you can just take this and, you know, rotate it into, you know, whatever looks good for you. All right. Oh, it's up. And now you'd say, well, hey, I want this to be in the other, you know, on the other side. Maybe I want it to be on this side. So what do I do? Well, just like any other component, you can go up up here and you know mirror this, rotate it, and so forth. So that's how I can flip that direction. Unfortunately, you can't flip this independently of this. You know, in other words, the, the sense current direction, the control direction, you can't flip that without flipping the actual source. So sometimes you have to do a kind of weird wiring. In other words, if this direction of IX was out, if we were flowing from right to left like this from B towards A towards the source, I would have to sort of monkey with things here a little bit. What I would do is from the top, I would have to connect this over and then the 
back end of this, and I know this looks a little weird, but that would be the appropriate connection. You'd be going from B, right? I'm trying to get the current to go in the opposite direction. So I'm going from B right to left through the 10K to the power supply. And that's what's happening here. Here's B. It's going a little loop-de-loop, -loop, but it's still going right to left through the 10K and then to the power supply. Okay. So like I said, sometimes your, your drawing might look a little weird, but, you know, there it is. Your other option would be to use this. And then you could just draw it in. You know, you, this would go back to B. This would go back to the 10K. And then you'd have to draw this part of it upside down. In other words, the, the 15K would be coming off of here to ground. Okay, that kind of thing. And then you'd have to loop this end back down to the 2K. So, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other, right? Um, but beyond that, you know, you just sort of orient this thing in space so that it looks halfway decent. Another, op, um, another operation you could do with this would be to sort of um, flip this on its side, you know, one of one of these kinds of kinds of things. You know, you might find that that's going to work better. Okay, and remember, in Tina, you can you can flip the um, the label right independently. Okay, so you're sitting here and you know you you play with this and you get something that looks halfway decent, right? Bonk, and that's what I'm looking at here. So here's what I've drawn. Here's my current source. And I've put a couple labels in here just to make it clear. I use some text. So here's my IX flowing in. And I'm just labeling this 100 IX because, you know, the, the label that it gives you automatically just gives you the, the, the factor in 100. So maybe it's not immediately clear. So I, I put these things in here, IX and 100X, right? Okay, so there's my circuit. I've got my simulation. Now I can run the thing. But before we do, you know, let's just run through how we compute this longhand first. And essentially what we're going to use is Kirchhoff's current law, nodal analysis. So you, you pick a node, right? Now, before we go any further, I need to point out that nodes A and B from the original diagram, nodes A and B are the same node. There's just a wire here. Now that was just put in there for convenience. In any case, so I'm going to look at node B. KCL, summation of current in equals summation of current out, right? Total currents in equal total currents out. So I'm assuming IX is going like this, and 100 IX, the current source, is going like this. Those are both incoming, and they're going to sum, and I'm assuming that they're going to flow down to ground through R2. So the incoming would be IX on this side, and then 100 IX on the other side, All right? So there's my incoming. And then my outflowing would be the current through R2, which we write as, as uh, an Ohm's law equivalent, which is the voltage VB, right? B to ground dropping across R2. So there's that. And then I just combine up my terms. So that's 101 IX has to equal VB over 2K. And then I'm just going to write IX in terms of the surrounding voltages, right? This is the standard technique we, that we use. I'm looking for current, so I'm going to describe everything in terms of resistances and voltages. So how do I describe IX? Well, it's the current through R1. And I can say, because it's flowing uh, left to right here, that would be V1 minus VA, which is VB. All right. That is the potential across R1. So you take that and you divide it by R1. You divide it by, by the, the uh, 10K, right? So there's my 101. IX is 1 volt minus VB. All right. So that's the drop across the 10K divided by 10K. And again, that just equals VB over 2K. So now we multiply this out, collect up your VB terms, right? So I've got 101 volts over 10K. And then I've got this 101 VB over 10K, a negative, which bring it to the other, other side of the equal sign, right? And now I can factor out my VBs. So 101 uh, volts over 10K gives me 10.1 mils. And now I've got VB times this quantity of 1 over 2K uh, plus 101 over 10K. So um, 1 over 2K is going to give me 0.5 millisiemens. And then 101 over 10K is going to give me 10.1 millisiemens. So that's 10.6 millisiemens. Now I can just solve this for VB, which works out to 0 0.95283 volts. That's what we would expect to see out here. Now that I know that voltage, I can go over and look at node C, do the same thing, right? Do a summation on um, 
the currents I in and I out. Okay, so I'm going to assume, and again, you don't know, but you know, if your assumption's wrong, it's, it's all gonna work out in the end because you're just gonna wind up with a negative number, right? But I'm going to assume, for arbitrary reasons, that this is a positive voltage. So I'm gonna assume the current's flowing like this, down through R3. Why? Cause, all right, just cause. It doesn't really make any difference. So what is that current? That would be a negative current, all right? If I'm gonna describe that as input, that would be negative. That would be the voltage VC divided by 15K. So that's my term here. If I had assumed it was coming in, then it would be positive. But then I would be assuming that my VC is a negative voltage, because if the current's flowing in this direction, it would be plus to, mi plus to minus in this direction, right? Plus on ground, minus here. Either way, it's gonna work. What's the outflowing current? Well, that's the value of the current source, which is 100 IX. So here is your KCL equation, right? VC is equal to um, 15K, or VC divided by 15K negated is equal to 100 IX. Same thing with IX that we did before. Write it in terms of the voltages. So that's one volt minus VB. Divide that by 10K. Again, we just expand this out and solve in terms of VC. We know what VB is, right, from our preceding computation, so we could just plug that in there, figure this out, boom, we get a negative 7.0755 uh, volts. As I said, we were assuming, you know, it, it, the current was flowing this way, so like I said, it, it all works out. You're just gonna get a negative sign over here, okay? Great, so let's actually do the, um, the DC analysis on here. So the easy way to do this, we'll just do a calculate node voltages, and the two little probes I have are gonna pop out. So there's a negative 7.075 volts, all right? We just, um, we don't have quite as much resolution as our hand calculation does, but that's okay, it's the same number basically. And here we have 952.83, which is uh, the same thing we have down here, right? This is 952.83 millivolts versus I wrote down on uh, 0.95283 volts, same thing, all right? Beautiful, okay, so in a nutshell, that's how you use a dependent source, right? You pick one of the four, and really the only sort of goofy part about it is you might have to do some weird little drawing for the sensing part, all right? Now, if you are using um, one of the voltage controlled sources, because I think that's worth just taking a second look at, just be careful in the way you wire this up, all right? So for example, if this voltage was a function of, let's say the voltage across R1, how do you wire that in? Well, if the polarity that you're assuming is plus to minus like this, right? Plus on the left, minus on the right, then you would wire this, here's the controlling element, right? You would wire it in like this. Remember, it's a voltage, so just think of like a voltmeter. It's gonna go across the thing, right? Over here, this is current, so we think of it like an ammeter, it goes in line. But if you're doing a voltage sense, it goes across, all right? And then, of course, you would just treat this as normal voltage source with plus and minus terminals. Don't forget to go in here and, and uh, adjust whatever the amplification factor is, okay? All right. Beautiful. Any questions? Put them down in the comments. Take care and we'll see you next time.